real quick making this video so um i just did a consultation with this young man and he told me to make a video like this as a reminder because his situation goes his ex whatever she may be to him venture off as you know with a goddamn co-worker i swear it's the, i don't know if that's a new, new trend or anything like that it's just like the co-worker is so close there so they have you no know, easy pickings for your ex your person your wife your husband so anyway the the girl monkey branch from him to this damn co-worker and try to play like she hasn't been doing anything with this person and according to him she she been ball, balling out crying and all that type of stuff and lying and saying you know she ain't been doing that with the co-workers you're just friends they're just co-workers so fast forward you know how the story goes you know she revealed yeah she been you know doing stuff with the co-worker then next thing you know they pop up in a relationship together so over time because he don't want to let this girl go he been letting her come back to him as a shoulder to cry on an emotional tampon all she doing is talking about how this new co-worker is dogging her ass out and she go run right back to him because she familiar with him using him as an emotional tampon a shoulder to cry on but this is what you don't do and i want you to remember this like i told you one you put yourself on that pedestal you kick her ass off she made her decision. She decided to go with someone else because she want excitement. She want thrills and all that type of stuff. Now, understand this. If you're a woman, you're a female, this goes for you too. Just because I'm saying it, a young man doesn't mean you exempt from this because you go through this too. Matter of fact, y'all go through this a little bit worse because your, your emotions get engaged with it even. It's like more intense. And you want to come up with solutions, answer, you want closure, you want to know what this person is doing, what this person is wearing. You start becoming a you know, goddamn detective and you start investigating this stuff. Some of you women out there be breaking the law. I be seeing y'all on that goddamn TV show 60 Days In. I be watching it. But the moral of the story is this. You don't let nobody come back to you and use you as an emotional tampon. That is the most disrespectful thing possible. They know how you feel about them. But at the same time, they telling you to your face about someone else and what they doing with someone else. And you sitting there hoping and wishing in fairytale land, maybe one day we'll get it back together. I don't know what she see in this person or what they see in this person. One day it'll fizzle out and I have my opportunity again and we can be lovers and we can have something build on something better and stronger. But as soon as this person dropped this other sucker, that's my opportunity. You wishful thinking, you delusional. No, hell no. You never, ever come number two. Number two is the first loser. If you're in a race, if you're not first place, you the first loser. Number two, second place is the first loser. Me, Warren, say never do that. Put yourself first. Love yourself first. If you don't love yourself and take care of yourself, what can you do for others? People treat you how you treat yourself. You set the tone for all that. If you say nipping in the bud, like, you know what? You choose this co-worker over me, so you stay your ass over there with the co-worker. Now, the thing is, I'm going to tell it like it is. On the co-worker side, from the painkiller perspective, they look at you like, well, you lost. Your ex, your girl, your husband, your man, your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, whatever, fill in the blank. They chose me over you. So that makes me the better person. This is from the pain, the painkiller perspective. They chose me over you. You wasn't doing something right. If you was doing everything right, 
maybe your person, your fiance, whatever, fill in the blank, wouldn't be over here with me. And you know how they think. This is what they think. Since they over here with me, I'm going to give them something they never have. I'm going to be the best boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever they may be. But in reality, a painkiller. I'm going to be the best, whatever that is, to them. And they're going to forget all about you. But they don't realize they just, it just, they turn. They turn going to be up. Then they're going to jump right back on that carousel. And they're going to find another victim. But they're going to, you know, they're going to join the, the pain, the hurtful, painful club sooner or later. It might be years from now. We don't know. It could be three months. It can be six months. It can be a year, two years, four years. It really, that rebound relationship really depends on them. Nine times out of ten, the painkiller, they they, they going to fight hard. Especially if you in the picture and you interfere, competition makes rebound relationships last longer. It makes it last longer. But remember this and never forget. If you're dealing with a narcissist, you're dealing with a child. And all they're doing, their whole objective, their whole mission is to find their second childhood. Their second childhood. First childhood with their parents. They've probably been jacked up or who knows. But second childhood is to find some other sucker that will take care of them. So they can have their little way and play. Don't be that sucker that take care of these people. Make people earn what, you know, earn you. If they don't earn you, they don't respect you. Let me say that again. If they don't earn you, they don't respect you. Then, but, you know, like this young man asked me, what is she going to be doing? What is she going to be doing in the meantime when he's not away? Is she going to be thinking about me? Those are the wrong questions to be asking. The thing is, like I said all the time, they want to be a hoe. Most people ask me, well, Warren, I'm married. Married with kids. That don't apply to me. BS. It does apply to you. Your wife, your husband, and all that stuff. You think because you got a wedding ring on your finger, that stopped them from being a hoe? Some of the biggest hoes are in the marriage. Some people are like, well, I don't want to be alone. There's a lot of people in relationships that's still alone. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You in a relationship... But that person ain't giving you no time or energy, nor the day, time or day. But you in a relationship with them, you still lonely. So, the thing is, this goes for married people too. If your husband, wife, or whoever, whatever, they want to go out there and be a hoe, you let them. You let them go out there and be a hoe. They for the streets. You let them go. For the streets. Because the thing is, if you really, really think about it and analyze it, a lot of people trouble come from nutting in the wrong person or letting the wrong person nut in them or marrying the wrong person. Make a commitment to the wrong person. Those two things can cause your life, make, you know, cause you to live a life of living hell. Let me say it again. Nutting in the wrong person or letting the wrong person nut in you or marrying the wrong person make a commitment to the wrong person those choices will uh, you know will make your life a living hell and when you do that stuff you putting all your energy into that relationship into that person the most high do not condone that the most high do not want you to worship your spouse when you worship your spouse and put them on a pedestal there's no room for the most high and he do not like that. He want all the glory and respect. When you worshiping this person, showering this person, worship, kissing the ground they walk on, the most I look at that like, no. I bless you with that person, but you giving that person my praise. Let's split that up. Let's get rid of that. I need all that. So that's why me, myself, and I, I praise the most high. You know, I'll go out there. I'll live the best life possible for him. I, me, Warren, do not take any glory for any. Not too long. If you'd like to get in contact with me, shoot me an email. Or you can text me. 1706-346-4783. I'll let me. Peace.